Number 17 then, the last one in the specimen paper here for 11 marks. Essentially a trigonometrical question. The first part of it for 5 marks is to take this number, complex number in its polar form and demonstrate these two identities by using De Mauvres and the binomial. So it's that sort of standard old chestnut then of expand it two ways and equate the parts. Well, the De Mauvres mean there must be a power involved and you can see here with the fours in it, it must have been a power four. If you take z to the power four, that would be cos theta plus i sine theta to the power 4, and using the Mavras, which is the first way they want you to do it, that simply means, notice the modulus is just 1, so that won't be affected, it'll just be 4 times the angle, 4 times the argument. So it'll just turn into cos 4 theta plus i sine 4 theta. Using the Mavras gets you the first mark. And the other way would be to use the binomial to expand this into a bit more room here. So if you've got cos theta plus i sine theta to the power 4, then it's a case of going through all of these, one more, five terms. So I'll need a bit of space here. And you could quickly check the binomial coefficients for the line with the 4 in it, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. You could put down your Pascal's triangle. So what have we got? One times. We'll start off with this one to the power 4, and that won't be there because it's power 0. Plus 4 times, now it drops to power 3, and this goes to power 1, so i sine theta. Then it goes to, whoops, 6, and that'll be it. Probably going too far here. Cos squared theta, I'll just put i squared sine squared theta. Then I'll go back to 4, and now it's dropping down to cos theta, but i cubed sine cubed theta, and find the line one times, and the cos will disappear being to power 0, and I'll put i to the 4, sine to the power 4 theta. There, made it. Now there was one mark for using the binomial expansion and starting it off. And the other mark for finishing off, tidying it up, because this isn't tidied up yet. So that first term's fine. Cos to the power 4 theta. Not much I can do with that one. 4i times cos cubed theta sine theta. However, here i squared will be negative 1. So it'll be minus 6 cos squared theta sine squared theta. This one here, i cubed, will now be negative 1 times i. So it'll be minus 4i cos theta sine cubed theta and finally i to the power 4 will be negative 1 times negative 1 which is positive 1 so that's just sine to the 4 power 4 theta so there's the expansion and finishing it off gives you the third mark now it's just a case of equating the two results you equate them by taking the real parts and the imaginary parts well the real part of this is the part cos 4 theta. And the real part of this is anything that doesn't say i, so that'll be cos to the 4 theta, this is no use, minus 6 cos squared theta sine squared theta, and over here at the end, plus sine to the power 4 theta. Equating the real parts gives you a mark, and then the imaginary parts. So, that side has got sine 4 theta in the imaginary part, and this has got anything with an i in it, which is the 4 cos cubed theta sine theta, and the other one is the minus 4 cos theta sine cubed theta. Of course, there's no need to put the i's in them. They would just cancel out anyway. And that gets you the fifth mark. Now, part B for three marks, you have to show that tan 4 theta is given by this expression here. Well, you've got sine and you've got cos of 4 theta, so tan 4 theta will just be sine 4 theta divided by cos 4 theta. And putting in the values, you would have 4, this is sine 4 theta, cos cubed theta, sine theta minus 4 cos theta sine cubed theta. Noticing as well, all the sine ones involve the odd powers, just like the expansion of sine. And cos 4 theta has got cos to the power 4 theta, minus 6 cos squared theta sine squared theta, 
plus sine to the power 4, that's a power 4 theta. Again, the expansion of cos involves even powers. That's worth a mark, just by saying it's sine over cos and writing it down. Then you think, how can you turn this into this? And as we notice, you've got exactly the same number of parts, two on top, three underneath, two on top, three underneath, exactly the same coefficients, four, negative four, four, negative four, one, negative six, and one again. So all you're going to be doing here is dividing, of course, of course to create tans. The only things that disappears really are these coses. So to obtain this, you're just going to do this, divide the top and divide the bottom by cos to the power four theta. Because I'll have to take this one out to a one and this one to a tan four theta. Now the next mark it says is for dividing the top and the bottom, that's still the intention. So I'll just do the division now. So this part would become four and I'll show the division just by saying Three of them will have gone, leaving sine theta over cos theta. Here, only one of them will go, so that will leave sine cubed theta over cos to the power, oops, three theta. That'll become one, we'll just put. That'll knock out two of them, leaving minus six sine squared theta over cos squared theta, and that becomes sine to the power four theta over cos to the power four theta just dividing each of the five parts by cos to the power 4 theta. Everything on top and everything underneath. That's now worth a mark. And then finally just tidy it up then. So tan to the 4 theta is going to be, that's 4 tan theta minus 4 tan cubed theta over 1 minus 6 tan squared theta plus tan to the power 4 theta for the last mark. Part C then for three marks, find algebraically the solutions to this equation. This equal to zero. And you think, well, what have we got here? It looks exactly the same as this, doesn't it? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. The numbers are there, still the same, except some of them are negatives. So why not just sort them out into the correct order? That's fine, that should be there. Minus six tan and plus tan, that should be there. But these ones are the wrong way around. So the obvious thing to do is pop them over the other side and they'll look exactly like that. So I'll leave the ones I've got here. I've got a one on this side already. I've got the minus six tan squared theta already. And I've got the tan to the four tan to the power 4 theta. So that looks like this denominator. This should have had positive 4 tan, so bringing that over to the other side gives me 4 tan theta. And of course this will go across as minus 4, whoops, tan cubed theta. Well, that was the bottom, that was the top. So if you divide them, it'll take you back to this. So taking this across to here, we've got this. 4 tan theta minus 4 tan cubed theta over 1 minus 6 tan squared theta plus tan to the power 4 theta equals 1. When you take that across and divide. Now doing all of that gets the first mark. And then of course that's identical to this, so I've just got this thing. So that simply means tan 4 theta is 1, and you just got to solve that wee equation between 0 and pi upon 2. So 4 theta is going to be, well, the tan of 45 degrees. The tan of pi upon 4 gives 1, so pi upon 4 is one answer. And indeed, a mark pops in as soon as you put pi upon 4 for the first answer, for 4 theta. But all the values of the tangent are separated by 180 degrees. They just march forward and backwards 180 degrees. That's adding on pi. So adding on another four parts will give you five, par five pi upon four. And if you needed it, adding on another four parts would give you nine pi upon four and so on. And of course, quite often you go further than you need because there won't be a redundancy when you're dividing. Dividing will give you different values. But how far do I need to go in this case? So I've got pi upon 16. That's less than pi upon 2. I've got 
5 pi upon 16, that's less than pi upon 2, but 9 pi upon 16 is greater than half of pi, so that's as far as you need to go in this case. So, there's the two answers. The qualifier, why did I stop there? Because theta had to be less than pi upon 2, and okay, greater than 0. And that's it done.